We might as well, Tom. We might as well, indeed. The podcast isn't going to start itself, you know. N- no, indeed it is not. Indeed. So, so welcome, everyone. Do you even star made the podcast episode 5? No, I don't. I play Terra Tech. With General Von Green. Doom and myself, Tamino Sama. So basically, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, the first thing uh, we want to cover is mouse aim. We want to talk about thrust mechanics, uh, construction ordering or whatever, construction of design. A little bit of a work in progress section, like always. Only two of us here today, though, so it's not going to be as long. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about YouTube and star made YouTubers, which is fun. Yay! And so, um, yeah, first point. Um, mouse aim. It came up a while back, just before the uh, weapons came out, that uh, there was a... People were saying that the mouse aim is a bit of a crutch, so like if you can aim anywhere on the screen and you get this 180 degree firing cone, there's it's, it's sort of like there's no point in having activation uh, logic weapons because you know, there's such a huge advantage from mouse aiming um, and people were calling for it to be a fixed guns only fire straight and you have to turn the ship, so what, what do you think about that in general? Well, to be honest I'm thinking it was kind of unrealistic for a start because if you think about it a gun it can't actually arc its fire can it no it's going to fire in a straight line wherever you point it mm. it would be the same with a ship to be honest it, you, just, you have to point your entire ship in the enemy's direction and fire away or if you got Taurus of course they have to point so I'm thinking if you pointed a freaking mouse and the boys go that way it's kind of mm. yeah kind of a bit OP it should be nerfed nerf it now please should be nerfed. It does sound like it's a little bit overpowered to me as well. Like, a 180 degree firing cone is, like, pretty... It's pretty big. Tell um, me, um... It, it would actually give you a pretty big advantage against logic ships, to be honest, with auto fire, because you just have pinpoint accuracy 100%. Yeah. And and the logic ships would be like missing about ninety percent of the time, wouldn't they? Yeah. Or they, they would have to be turning their ship and if they got a slow turning speed. Exactly. And you're just like this freaking tower ship and you're just arcing all your fire hundred and eighty degrees. That's a bit of a that's you know, like basically too much of a... Yeah, yeah, true, because you could build like you said, you can build a tower ship, it's got a hundred and eighty degree firing arc, you only have to turn ninety degrees and you're behind yourself. You know, you're shooting backwards now. Whereas, yeah, so I'm thinking maybe things should only fire straight forwards, but it would be a big change. I mean, I don't know if people would react well to it, you know, if that was something that was done. It'd probably have to be a server setting just to stop people from raging, you know, about... Because it makes it very easy. Um, I mean, there are actually mechanisms in... I think Davo Rock's trying to bring this up right now. You can actually get bullets which have an off-center weight inside them, which is programmed to make them spin spin off-center and therefore go round corners. Um, yeah, but even then, they shouldn't be a hundred percent accurate, you know. Mm. And then also, um, what else have we got? The lasers could be like deflected or something with a prism. I don't know. I mean, it does seem like the way you limit certain missiles is by having them straight for, shoot forwards or lock on or scatter fire and you'd think that if it was going to be like that for uh, for AMCs and lasers because you can't lock on can you with 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 uh, cannons and lasers no they're not heat seeking freaking missiles are they they're just uh, going to go in a straight line that you point it at to be honest yeah, because it's almost like if you're going to make a gun that's really big, then it, it you know, it, there wouldn't be room for it to turn inside the ship. So, I think that that's a valid point. I can't, I think, I, th- I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember where that question came from, but it was probably set by the last group that came through in episode four. Um, little plug, we're on SoundCloud, so you can see us there, links in the description. But, um, 
Okay, so we'll move on now to the next section, which is the thrust mechanics. So, at the moment, the thrust mechanics are... They're not quite linear. I think they curve off. The more thrust you have, the less effective they become. Which is good, because it stops massive ships from going around like Ferraris. You know, a Titan should be slower. They still do, actually. They still, they still do. do. Oh, really? <laughs> they still... Sh well, they try. They're trying. <laughs> Thing is, people them complain. Down, you don't instantly go to max speed, but you know they still get to max speed as long as it takes a little bit longer. You should a little ship should be able to pull away. Trouble is with weapon ranges, you've got to pull away a long way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you need to be like a few thousand meters away before they're at top speed. Otherwise, you're going to get shot down. You know. Unless it's supposed to be like that because it's sublight and when FTL comes, you'll have a way to get away, you know? But we don't know anything about that, so... Well, let's just stick to thrusters for now, as that's a whole different topic, I think. Yeah, um, Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the way thrusters are right now, I think they are pretty good. Could do a bit more tweaking, to be honest, to offset fighters to large ships. Because it, it feels like my massive freaking um, missile cruiser, yeah? Yeah. feels like um, some sort of sports car I'm rolling around in, to be honest. Yeah. It, it's like, it goes pretty fast, pretty quickly. I can catch up to a fighter, no problem. Of course, that fighter's going to have pr better maneuverability with turning in that. Mm. But if we had a drag race, my ship would easily just catch up, to be honest. So... I think the uh, curve needs to be a bit there, you know? Right. Plus, with bigger ships, you need more thrust, of course, and it, it just rises up exponentially. Yeah. I mean, you don't see, like, in real life, you don't see, like, a thousand meter long uh, cargo ships just uh, hauling the cargo like a thousand miles per hour, do you? No. <laughs> no, you don't. Exactly, but in Star Made, you do. <laughs> yeah, and that's because people say, oh, but in space, you can go as fast as you want, because it's space. There's no air, to, there's no drag. Yeah, but your ship has mass. Yeah, and but... <laughs> if it, as, as such, you're going to need bigger thrusters. You are going to need bigger thrusters, which are going to require more power, which requires more mass, and basically you end up in a situation where eventually you can't push yourself fast enough. Pretty much, it's a vicious circle. So I think, um, to be honest, big ships should be going slow, you know, mm -hmm. and be escorted by the sl the uh, faster fighters, to be honest, and like smaller cruise ships. Yeah, I agree. I think that'd be a, be quite a cool feature as well. But like I say, with the moment, with so many people drive flying around in battleships, you know, that's going to change eventually. Mm. Battleships are not the way to go. They're not. They're not the way to go now in real life. They're not the way to go in Star Made either. No. It's all about the turrets and the fighters. It is. It is. And when the fleet controls come, there will be no point in thinking about. I'm going to have a really big gun because your really big gun's going to get chunked before you get to use it. Pretty much. Um. Those shields you got, what shields? Yeah. The fighters are just taken down. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting. So, like, basically, um, I wonder what we've got next. Next up, we got inside or outside construction attitudes. So, I got here order, details, and function. I don't know what that's about. I'll be honest. I'm thinking it's something to do with... Do you build it from the inside out or from the outside in? Uh, you won't get much of an answer from me because uh, I do it randomly. Yeah, I'm not like, going to lie. Like whatever I feel like at the time, you know. Yeah, I must admit, mine's a bit like clay as well. I kind of to make be honest, a lump. you should get a uh, master builder in here for that sort of question. Yeah, we should. Well, next time we're going to make sure we get a special guest. So yeah, we'll get someone in here and we'll grab someone from the lounge. There's probably someone here now, but they don't know, so we won't grab them in yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, come here, podcast. <laughs> uh, hey, Oliver, I don't know any podcast.
Last I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, uh, in that case, straight on to the work in progress corner. So uh, let's do you first, then. What was the last thing you worked on? What did I work on? Well, I worked on that Settle program ship in that video. True. That was interesting. Yeah, I liked that video. That I, was cool I did video. crash land it into the planet accidentally. I was going for a soft touchdown, but uh, it, it, it decided your ship's made of paper. Boom. Dead. And it just Kinda. fell to pieces. It did. It was spectacular. Highlight the of the video. Yeah. But the proper thing I was working on is that uh, missile cruiser mm. with the logic inside, so it has like infinite auto firing missiles. Nice. And it, it it did take me about a week or two to build it, to be honest, with all that logic. Um, logic does take a while to wire up uh, when you can be bothered. Yeah. 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 It's nice yeah. though. It was nice. I had um, um, transforming armor, you know, ablative armor. Uh, not ablative armor. I'm getting my words mixed up here, Tom. Save me. Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, logic. Logic! Logic! You had the armor that folds off, you had the battle armor. Remember? Yeah. And then that was the thing I was talking about. And then the lighting as well, the flashes, blinky lights. Yeah, the red alert. That was with logic as well. Yeah. And then um, what else did you have? You had the missiles as well, obviously. Yeah, I had uh, uh, auto doors where you just walk up to them in the open. Mm. Only works in single player, not on the mushroom fleet, because for some reason mushroom fleet doesn't like it. Sorry. <laughs> but um. But yeah, um, so yeah, and that, that's, I'll probably have some pictures of that um, up on the uh, site, so pretty sure, pretty sure there's a video or two knocking about. Well, it is on my Starfade videos, there on a couple know. of them, the annoying blueberry yeah, cookie one. Yeah, of course, one, the and... blueberry cookie. Yeah. I love that oh video. Oh my god. Hey, hey, can, can I, can I poke it? Hey, what does this do? <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant, mate. I love that Starfade series. That's the point, actually. Uh, moving on straight to the section. Uh, build, speed builds, ship reviews, videos. Star made videos. Loving the series that you're doing right now, actually. That Starfade series is brilliant. Yeah, I'm actually having a lot of fun making them, to be honest. It's like, I don't feel like making a video, but I feel like making a video that's fun. Mm. So, let's do Starfade! Yeah, exactly. It, it's basically gives you a, you got an infinite amount of ideas you can do, to be honest, with Starfade. Yes. Like, you could turn anything into something with that. Like, the, the original, the um, first parody of, of Starmade, the, uh, I don't know why I called it now, don't really care. But episode one of Starfade, yeah. all I was doing was going into the game with nothing, and basically messing about. And then I put it together, and there you go, Starfade, done. Yep. I, I, I didn't need a set goal in mind to come up with that. I can't wait to see where that series goes. Oh, and you've just started a new series, which is kind of a let's play, kind of? Yeah, this is the beginning of the end for everyone. What was it Settle called? Settle Program. Settle. Yep. So the idea was to do some sort of survival series with or without other people, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and basically I've crash landed onto a, t a Martian planet in the uh, Settle ship. Mm -hmm. so the idea is to actually load up this uh, small ship with some salvages and that, get a few ores and that from floating asteroids, then find a planet to set up base on with... Um, a set amount of items with a starter money of 25,000 credits, so anyone can do this. Yeah. So, yeah, I did actually crush that on the Martian planet. Spoilers, by the way. And it looks amazing. Yeah. You, you have to see it to believe it. <laughs> I just love it when it crashed. It, it was like... It was like it was made uh, of China. <laughs> yeah. The hull was made of China, dude. It pretty much was. Never seen anything I, like it. I was just going for a soft touchdown onto the planet, and all of a sudden it's like, crumble, dead. Just crumbled into pieces. Yeah. Uh, uh. 
What about you, Tom? What about what me? What about me? Well, um, let's see. Um, you'll have to wait until next episode because we're out of time. Oh! Yay! I've dodged the question. So basically, next episode, um, if we don't have a guest, then I'll tell everyone what I've just built, which will be so exciting for everyone. And I'm sorry, it's an apology. But there you go. So thanks for everyone watching. That was episode five. So uh, thanks, General, for joining. You're very welcome, Tom. And thanks, everyone, for listening and checking it out on SoundCloud. And see you next time.